Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome to the Port Report for Mad Max. This is the second major release this week, and both of these, I think, deserve a good in-depth look to see whether or not they are decent PC versions before you drop $60 on either of them. So, this is the second after Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain, and this is by Avalanche. Now, these guys are, of course, known for Just Cause 2, and if you recall correctly, Just Cause 2 was pretty well received as a rather good PC version. Now, I'm pretty happy to report that Mad Max is a really, really good PC version, and I'm going to show you exactly why, but we'll try and poke some holes where we can. So, first things first, full mouse control in menus, always nice, and that goes game-wide. It's not just the options menu, you can navigate every menu using the mouse, which is just lovely, and of course, exactly what you should expect. Before I go on, I should remind you, of course, that I'm recording this with Shadowplay to make sure there's no real performance impact while capturing, which is not the case with other software, so I can give you an accurate representation of the performance that's currently going on. I am running this in SLI, although what I will say is that the difference in frame rate between SLI and non-SLI is not that high on my system. We'll talk a little bit more about performance once we dive in. All right, settings menu, let us begin. Subtitles and tutorials, nice and easy, nothing really to complain about there. Controller, first little complaint that I happen to have, button maps does not allow you to rebind. It only has an alternative set of controls here, as you can see. Always nice to have controller rebinding. Obviously, I don't use controller for most of my games, but I think you should include that nonetheless. Some people do like that very much. Okay, if we move on to audio. Audio setup, you have a variety of presets here. Doesn't exactly tell you what most of these do. What is Fury? One assumes that Fury is the super compressed, blown out, really, really loud, hey, look at how noisy we are sort of thing. Similar to war tapes in Battlefield Bad Company 2. You've got separate audio sliders here for music, sound effects, and dialogue, as well as cinem cinematics, which is quite nice. And you can optimize for 5.1, 7.1, or stereo. You can also choose your audio device from inside the game, which is pretty rare. Generally don't get that option. It's always nice to have for those of us that have multiple audio devices. Gamma options, exactly as you would expect here. Nothing really to write home about. Now, graphics. What a menu this is. Lots and lots of options here. So I have really only a couple of complaints, and I'll get onto those in a second. So you've got presets here. And obviously we've gone for custom. Full screen on or for borderless window available. Resolution options. They cover most of the major resolutions, as far as I can tell. And they also give you an option for the Hertz level, the refresh rate of your monitor here. Which unfortunately does mean there's a lot of clicking if you want to get through this. A drop down would have probably been better here as far as I am concerned. We're still going, by the way. But that is a lot of different resolutions. I mean, hell, you can even go down to 720 by 480 which is... 640 by 480 is supported, which is really rare for a game in 2015. Now, the one complaint I do have is very, very minor. It's the game doesn't seem to actually save this setting. So if I set 144 hertz, it always seems to go back to 59. But that doesn't seem to affect the frame rate of the game at all, as you can see in the corner. If this goes back to 59, this is still going to be running at like 123. So this doesn't seem to matter, at least on my system, but it may on yours. V-Sync on or off, and Asotropic filtering. Thank God we actually have that. L good tooltips to the side here, by the way, like that. Always nice to give that kind of information. And Astrotropic goes all the way up to 16. Always good to crank that up if you can. Geometric detail, shadow resolution, shadowed lights, texture detail. Most of this goes up to very high and defaults to high. So just bear that in mind if you want to crank things up to absolute maximum. Motion blur is off. Soft particles, SSAO. Specular point lighting. Anti-aliasing. So this is FXAA. This is the other minor complaint that I've got about graphics. It's generally good to support multiple times of multiple types of anti-aliasing, especially bearing in mind that FXAA is considered by many to actually be not that great. Now, you can force a different kind of AA with your control panel, with your graphics card, for instance, and that might be something you want to do. Because FXAA, while it is not particularly heavy when it comes to performance impact, it's also not very good. It makes the game look a bit smeary. It's like you've... So we had Vaseline on the screen a little bit. A lot of people prefer this actually off. We've got it on to show performance. Parallax mapping on terrain, it even tells you sort of what that is. It gives the terrain texture more definition. We learn something new every day, don't we? Volumetric light quality, depth of field, fog and particle, heat haze. It's still going. Bloom and landscape debris. 
Is there anything obviously missing from this options menu outside of what I just mentioned? Uh, no, I mean, this is really impressive. There's a lot here. It also has auto detection, although I would like to see a benchmarking tool. That would be nice so that you could test exactly what goes on there. Although I have noticed that a lot of these options do seem to apply immediately and are actually represented in this back background here. A couple of games do that, like Borderlands, for instance. I found that very handy because it shows you exactly the difference between various settings which I thought was kind of cool so it's good that they included that key mapping not a huge amount to complain about here I did notice that it supports multiple mouse buttons so I was able to use mouse 4 for instance I was able to bind to that so that's always good if you've got a mouse with multiple side buttons you can use that I don't think there's really too much to worry about. I mean, you can even use uncommon keys like comma and full stop and things like that. So if you do want to bind it to something obscure, you know, that's num slash, for instance, num asterisk. Yeah, it's just, you know, it works pretty well. Hard to really argue with that. Just going to revert changes, make sure we don't screw that up. So most of this is fine. The only thing I would like to see is alternate key bindings, the ability to select multiple keys for the same action, because in some situations, it's nice to be able to have an alternative if you have your hands in a particular position. It's a very, very minor complaint, but I'm going to make it anyway because it's my job to nitpick. And there you go. You've also got the options for vehicles and things like that here as well. All right. That's the options menu. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it includes almost everything that I could want. Now, this game runs so well that I'm actually going to record in 2560 by 1440 here because if I crank it down to 1080p, it's it's like my graphics cards are barely even breaking a sweat, which is unusual. Usually I record in 1080p, but I'm going to record in 1440p and I'm going to downscale it. It'll hopefully make the shadow play quality a little bit better because shadow play isn't, of course, the best tool for getting high quality gameplay footage, but it does at least have a minimal performance impact. If I have one little complaint, it's about this WB play option. I'm not going to click it because it's got my email address in it. Actually, you know what? I can click it just to show you this. Why does this not respect the keyboard? Why do I have to press up and down for this? This is a really weird lapse because everything else is really good and this doesn't work properly. I don't know what's going on with that. It doesn't actually let you type your age in. And when you pass that, it has you put in your email address and password. But every now and again, if you type too fast, it takes some of the keystrokes as keyboard shortcuts. For instance, like to reset password or whatever, rather than actually respecting the fact that you're typing your password in. Which is really strange. It's a very odd little omission that needs to be patched out. Anyway, let's dive into the game and talk about performance handling and controls and all that sort of thing. Here we go. Loading times are not too bad and are, I think, pretty much non-existent once you get into the game, which is kind of nice for an open world. I haven't noticed many, if any, real loading times going on there. All right, I will endeavor not to spoil anything for you. So we're just going to drive out into the wilderness and do some things. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Look at this. Have you seen a prettier desert than this? I mean, it's a barren wasteland, but it's pretty damn good looking barren wasteland. You got to admit. So off we go and look at that frame rate. Oh, mm. makes me all tingly inside. This game runs really, really well on my system. Now, of course, my system is kind of ridiculous, but I did make sure that I went to check how other people's games were running, and reports are why that the game just run runs really well on most things. The optimization's great, and since you have a hugely customizable options menu, you can get this game running well on pretty much anything. Now, the Avalanche engine with Just Cause 2 ran really, really well on PC as well and was also very impressive, and the improvements that they've made to it make me kind of excited for Just Cause 3, I've got to be honest. Yeah, this is a, a nice little game. Look at that skybox. Look at those clouds. Yeah, okay, it's a desert. You know, it's not that hard to render a desert. There's really not that much going on on the screen. But you have got to admit that it is a pretty looking desert with some really, really nice effects, and it runs so well. Now, what I have noticed is that SLI on my machine doesn't seem to be scaling all that well. It may scale a little bit better on machines that have graphics cards which aren't things like Titan X. It may just be down to that fact. Say if you're running like 970s or 950s or anything like that, you might get better scaling because the performance is suffering more on a single card, but it's weird because my indicator there is showing that both GPUs are being worked fairly hard. 
the GPU one goes up to 100% on single card mode and it splits up the load a little bit but it doesn't really seem to help the frame rate all that much like i've gained 10 maybe 20 fps out of running sli and outside of that that's really about it outside of, i mean it's hard to complain because i'm really nitpicking about something that's running buttery smooth the frame rate is so high and it looks great on my high refresh rate monitor i've got to admit so, it doesn't seem like most people will have too many problems getting this game running at an acceptable frame rate. Reports on the Steam forums are almost universally positive, as they are on the subreddits and things like that. People seem to be really having a good time with this. Now, is it something that you'd expect to run well? Well, as I said, there's not really all that much going on on the screen at any given time. The busiest area that I've been in ended up having a sandstorm, and the weather effects are the only thing that knocked it below 100 frames per second for me. And that was on a single card. I don't know if that would happen on a second card. I suppose it is possible. But some of the dust effects and weather effects and things like that will have a minor frame rate impact. But outside of that, the frame rate is really, really consistent for the most part. So it runs beautifully, which is always nice to say, isn't it? You know, I think some people are afraid that after the Batman incident, we would be getting a bunch of other poor PC ports, but this is not one of them. I've got to give kudos to Avalanche, honestly, for that. Now, are there any other complaints? Well, I have to try and find them. I really do. But there are, there are really so very few. As for draw distance, you can see so far, so very, very far. And if I if I were to say, get out of my vehicle here, uh, come on, yeah, out you go. I can activate my binoculars and you can see just sort of how far you can see. It's really kind of impressive. Obviously, things are a little bit blurry, but there's a surprising amount of detail even at distance and I've got to say the heat haze is a really sneaky way of trying to hide that texture over there you see that <laughs> we talked about that in the Metal Gear Solid 5 video as well and this is commonplace in games you generally have the detail of textures reduce a distance and that's obviously a performance increasing little trick they do a decent job of hiding it but I can see it I can see it it's right there look at it yeah you can't fool me. But you've got to be honest. I mean, that, that's a pretty minor complaint considering just how impressive the draw distance is. I mean, we could just go and drive over there. Let's just go do that and see just how far away those smokestacks are. And it's really impressive that we can see that far. A lot of detail there. What's really, really cool as well is the game has these hot air balloons. I'm not sure if I can drive over this. I guess we're about to find out. It's got these hot air balloons, and you can fly really, really high up in the air, and it will allow you to pinpoint various little landmarks and places of interest. And I was quite impressed by the amount that you could see from there and how high you went up. We're still going. I mean, these smokestacks are, are really far away. We are still driving along. So yeah, hard to complain about that. Texture quality wise, I mean, it, it's mostly pretty good. It's kind of what you would expect from an open world game, honestly. If we want to go and uh, lick a few walls here, we can walk up to the sort of thing which is generally fairly low resolution. And yeah, it's a concrete pillar. Yeah, the resolution on that is not particularly good, but the resolution on the stuff that matters is pretty good. The texture work on most of the cars and of course the characters are pretty awesome. So I'm really just nitpicking there for the most part. Now, what about control issues? You would think that a game like this would be suspect to things like that, but quite surprisingly, I haven't really found all that many issues at all. I actually find the driving to be really quite pleasant. Oh, cool. We're going to have some weather. That's nice because we might actually get to see the frame rate drop a little bit in the sandstorm. I find the driving to be pretty good. It's, it's got a nice slidey arcadey feel that you'd expect from a buggy on sand. And it controls pretty well. You got a good amount of power sliding and things like that. And for the most part, it works. The on-foot controls and the combat and things like that also work particularly well. The combat, for those that don't know, is very Arkham style. It's got a couple of little interesting elements, but it is mostly Arkham style. And it works fine. 
really nothing to complain about there. I think you could play this game with a keyboard and mouse without any real issues. I don't think there's a huge benefit to playing on controller unless, of course, you just happen to be the sort of person that prefers to play these open world third person action games on a controller. And that it really is up to you. That's a personal preference thing. Personally, I have no issue playing them with keyboard and mouse. And in fact, I often prefer to do so. And I've noticed no obvious mouse acceleration or any weird control stick emulation stuff going on. It really does seem like it was designed so that it would run absolutely fine with a keyboard and mouse. Impressive, really. But honestly, what I've come to expect from Avalanche at this point, they have a very high standard of PC port. And this is certainly one of them. I'm trying to find complaints. Like, there really aren't all that many. <laughs> it's, it is a really good port. It runs really well. It looks really good for what it is. I mean, there's, you're not seeing any loading times here whatsoever. Texture popping, if it does exist, but it's really, really well hidden behind sandstorms and weather and heat haze and all that sort of thing. They've done a stellar job of obfuscating the vast majority of that. I see little doodads pop up on the ground every now and again. Every now and again when driving at high speed, but it's so very, very minor. Can't knock that down. That's a shame. Oh, well. So minor. It's a really good-looking game. It runs well. It controls well. There are very few PC-specific issues. You know, if I go to the menus... Oh, look, it's all mouse-controlled. And it's all really easy to do. I can use keys if I prefer, or I can use the mouse. I want to upgrade my tires. Click here. Click the tire tread upgrade that I want. And it shows me how much scrap I need and all that sort of thing. Spot on. Spot on. Exactly what I would want. Don't want to spoil this too much. There's the upgrades. Click on that. Here's the pause menu. You've got statistics, tutorials. You've even got a capture mode here, which I'm actually going to select. You can go into capture mode by pressing C and X, and it lets you apply various filters if you want to take screenshots. We could do that. I actually want to try this out because I haven't had a shot at it yet. You can adjust the position of the camera there. And you can go into video mode. You can change things like your color filter. <laughs> I don't even know why they put this in, but it's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, okay. That's, that's terrible. Let's not do that. Okay. I mean, it's one of the best PC ports I've ever seen. I can't poke too many holes in it. What is there to say? Runs well, plays well, controls well, has pretty much everything that you would expect from a really good PC version. If I wanted to get outside of the technical aspects, I could probably criticize them for not having official mod support. Uh, th that's unfortunately something of a luxury these days, and I'd certainly prefer that it wasn't. I think that it would be better if more game publishers and developers actually put that in. But that's just splitting hairs at this point. What else is there to complain about? I mean, you could maybe argue for lack of FOV options, but again, third-person game and no dodgy camera angles. You can fully control the camera, so it's not that big a deal. All right. I mean, I'm done. It's, it's It runs great. It's a good port. It's an excellent port. It's a stellar port. What else is there to say? My name's been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.